Penang consists of a multicultural society with people from different races and backgrounds living together harmoniously. The Western colonization in the past left behind traces, creating a beautiful part of the Pearl of the Orient which can now be seen today. Penang has a great diversity of cultures through the mixture of different races and backgrounds in this land. In Penang, there is a unique straight Chinese community. They are English educated and were Anglophiles, yet continue the Chinese tradition. They place great emphasis on Philippiety, being particular about priority and rank, while preserving a very Chinese culture and religion. They merge language, fashion and eating habits from the Nusantara culture into the daily lives. They are the Baba Nyonias also known as the Straits Born Chinese. They are offsprings of Chinese immigrants and local natives. Let's discover the culture of the Baba Nunyas. We are now in Georgetown, the capital of Penang. The history of Penang can be traced back to 1786, when the English East India Company arrived on this island and established their first trading base in Southeast Asia. There is a clock tower behind me. This clock tower was built in 1900 to commemorate Queen Victoria's 60-year reign. You can see some beautiful English buildings in this area. The historical origins of the Baba Nyonias can be traced back to the Ming Dynasty and earlier, the Ming Treasure Voyages. Some of these seafaring Chinese established small businesses here and set up homes with the local women. The men are called Babas and the women, Nyonyas. Penang is located near Thailand, Myanmar with influences from Indonesia, creating a unique culture present in their food. The Nyonya cuisine in Penang combines some Thai and local flavour. In 1826, Penang formed part of the Strait Settlement together with Malacca and Singapore. Most of the families in the past sent their children to English medium schools. At the time, people who were English educated could get jobs and work in the colonial government. English education contributed to the anglicized lifestyle of the Baba Nunez. In Penang, the Babas dressed in Western suits spoke English or Baba Hokkien. A lot of Babas were well educated and sent their sons to English mission schools and onward to England. The collision of Western and Oriental culture created these unique lifestyles, language, cuisine, and fashion. Language is also one of the characteristics of the Baba Nunyas. The Baba Nunyas in Penang speak Baba Hokkien intermingled with some Malay terms. Nowadays, we still can find Penang Baba Hokkien spoken with a mixture of Malay and English terms. The 19th and 20th centuries were the gilded age for the Baba Nunyas. The straight spawn Chinese usually live a prosperous life. They use imported European and English dinnerwares homes decorated with porcelain dolls in Victorian bell jars and Victorian-style furnishings. At the same time, 
There are also family rolls, porcelain, and furniture from China. Rooms are filled with mother the pearl furniture. And the doll of the room is carved and gilded. Penang has a lot of Baba Nyonya style hotels. One can experience the lifestyles of the Baba Nyonyas in these hotels. Baba Nyonya architecture evokes a sense of nostalgia and reminiscence. The combined opulence of Chinese mandarinate interiors and the majesty of Victorian fittings. Stained glasses from Europe complemented with Chinese design. A collision of Chinese and Western style is one of the characteristics of Nyonya architecture. We are now at Chinatown. There are a lot of traditional Chinese buildings. For instance, right at the corner is the Zhongshan Weigun, a Cantonese building. The one beside it is a Hokkien style building dedicated to the God of Prosperity. In Penang, almost half of the population are Chinese. These Chinese came from different places, mainly from Hokkien, Guangdong, Teochew, Hainan, and Hakka. Some of the Chinese were not married. When they arrived, they married the local women, and henceforth, this became the start of the Baba Nyonya community. As you can see, we are now in the main hall. In olden times, Families will host their guests in the main hall. There are some beautiful carved dolls gilded in gold. Young ladies clustered and are not allowed to meet with the men. Sometimes, young ladies will pick at the guests through these partitions. Straight Chinese furniture include both Chinese and Victorian design. Some of them were imported from China, such as the model of pearl furniture. Seashells were polished, sculptured, buffed, then mosaic inlaid to the red wood or black wood tables and chairs. The model of pearl gives a luminous glow looking exquisite and lands and opulence. Ballet is a day bed that can usually be found in the Nyonya family. The straight spawn Chinese place great emphasis on filial piety. They emphasize on the importance of family altars. They will prepare some Chinese and Nyonya tributes for ancestral worship. For instance, confectionaries, anku, and dishes. The straight born Chinese place great emphasis on family, so family altars are very important as well. In the drama The Little Nonya, there is a scene where the protagonist Yuan Yang 
was forced to burn her parents' altar, which is very heartbreaking for a daughter. In the first episode of the drama The Little Nonia, the scene of the Huang family conducting ancestral worship was filmed at this location. The design of the ancestral hall is very austere and solemn. Here is a Teng Tok. Food and feasting is orchestrated around the Teng Tok. A person who has been invited can join the meal. To showcase the owner's hospitality, families will serve guests with a grand meal. As you can see here, Western and Chinese tableware. They do not use chopsticks. Food is eaten with fork and spoon. Teng Tok is a long table set in the grand banquet setting. The Teng Tok in strict Chinese homes is usually a long wooden banquet table. Due to their familiarity with the English, they will extend the length of the table as needed so that they can entertain more sitting. If three generations can sit down together for a meal, it is considered life's ultimate blessing. As shown in the scenes in the Little Nonia movie, young Nonias would have been expected to help in the kitchen. Today, Nyona food are easily available in Penang. Nyona cuisine consists of Chinese favourites with distinctive local ingredients. Nyona cooking is spiced up with herbs, chilies, and flavoured with the much sought after Malay archipelago spices. Nyona food is delicious. The spices are mixed with up to 10 kinds of herbs. For instance, lemongrass, laksa leaf, curry leaf, turmeric leaf, pandan leaf, palm sugar, coconut milk, galangal, turmeric, string paste, asam galugo, chili, and etc. Apart from herbs and spices, unique ingredients such as fish intestines, fermented foods and streams in brine are used in Baba Nyonya cuisines for flavouring purposes. For instance, chinchalo, that is made from extremely tiny baby stream in brine. Sambal is a staple condiment. A good sambal is made from chilies pounded together with balachan. Sambal accompanies almost everything and is especially good with nasi lemak. Chinese cooking methods are blended with some local and special ingredients from Malay, Thai and Indian condiments to create the delicious Nonia cuisine. The sample Teng Tok menu includes Chicken Curry Capitan, Nonia Laksa, Yuhu Cha, Asam Pedas Ikan, Nasi Lemak and Nonia Kueh. A table of rich and delicious dishes is ready to be served. Nyonya Kue is one of the icons in the Nyonya cuisine. The colourful Nyonya Kue is just like the Nyonya culture, blazing with colours and full of vitality. Sri Mukha, the green part of the Sri Mukha is naturally coloured from pandan. And the blue part is a natural colouring from butterfly pea flower. Every Kue Kue has its own story and meaning. For instance, the famous Kue Lapis is named in Chinese meaning to attain higher success. 
that is usually served for celebrations and festivals. The making of kueh lapis is time-consuming and complex. It is steamed layer by layer. It's a really challenging process for the maker. Nyonya kueh is not the only nyonya dessert. There's also chendol and biko moi. Chendol is naturally colored with pandan, with generous servings of coconut milk, red beans and shaved ice. Here it comes, serving a tasty and refreshing dessert. Longan tea, nyonya kueh and betel nuts will be served before starting the long table feast. Traditional straits-born Chinese families make much of an impression on seniority. Before starting the feast, one will be required to prioritize rankings, whereby the elderly will have their meals first and the youngest will be the last ones to eat. The Nyonyas dress exquisitely well in the Nyonya Sarong Kabaya, the quintessential Nyonya outfit. A diaphanous embroidered blouse or if the baju banjang, a long tunic paired with batik sarongs. It is an elegant outfit that is suitable for most occasions as their choice of attire. The Kabaya Runda came around the 1920s with fine white and patterned track blouses trimmed with a broad and beautiful run of Dutch lace. The Kabaya Sulam emerged sometime in the 1940s, drawing fashion style influence from the Malay archipelago and China. It involves intricate and exquisite embroidery, magnificently designed with birds, flowers and phoenixes. Sometimes the Nyonya uses silk brocade to make a baju panjang. This is a choice of fabric for special occasions such as weddings. The straight Chinese weddings are distinctive. One may refer to the new version of the Little Nyonya movie. The wedding ceremony of Chen Shen and Mei Yu depicts part of the majestic straight Chinese weddings. Straight Chinese jewelry are unique to this part of the world, which are widely worn at celebrations and festivals. Baba families are matriarchal. Men work outside the house, the women folk manages the home. She is the decision maker in a family. Except for external commercial activities, other decisions will be made by the matriarch. This is also a representation of the manner Baba Nyonyas honours their elders. Chucky is an entertaining pastime. This leisurely indulgence is for the married ladies only. They will gather around a Chucky table, chit chat, and gossip with friends, chew bitter nuts. B 
beaded shoes are unique to the Nyonyas. Their fine craftsmanship reflects the refined and culture training a Nyonya receives at home from her mother. Vintage beaded slippers in the past are lovely sewn and worn by young Nyonyas and old BBs. The imported glass beads are finely and evenly stitched to the shoe face using cotton threads. These intricate and fine workmanship in embroidery and beadwork are highly prized. The ladies' beaded slippers come in two designs, peep toed or covered. The slippers come with a low flat heel or with a thick high heel. Both are very comfortable to wear. If the mother approves a maiden sample workmanship, she's then allowed to start on the first shoe. The marriageable young maiden will embroider a pair of embroidered slippers for her groom. Baba grooms are presented with embroidered slippers as part of the exchange of wedding dowries. When the Nyonya steps up at special occasions with her own hand beaded slippers, the shoe tells a lot about her. This intricate and fine workmanship in embroidery and work in kitchen are highly prized and marks the Nyonyas as accomplished and valued. In the era of arranged marriage, the wedding couple would only meet one another on the wedding day. So the skills are a criterion to gauge and determine if a Nyonya is a qualified wife. All skills such as beading, embroidery and preparing Nyonya dishes are required to attract a good husband. The straight Chinese weddings are majestic and ceremonious. The wedding in a wealthy family may take up to 12 days the couple engages in a series of formalities and observes a liturgy of rites, rituals and customs. The Penang Nunya bride dons the stunning Hong Guan Phoenix crown to match her imperial robe. This crown teems with gilt, gold and diamond florets. Nine golden phoenixes line the front of the crown, bestowing heavenly goodness, virtue, grace and benevolence on the bride. A black velvet headband decorated with the eight immortals, it gilt serves to protect the bride from any evil, spell or curse. The bride's comeliness is hidden behind a curtain of string-coloured glass, jade or gold beads. In Penang, the formal gold couch vermilion ceremonial wedding robe has white extended sleeves, saffron-coloured pleated skirt. Rabbit furs line the wedding baju banjang. Although Malaysia is located in the tropical zone, rabbit furs are used on the gown to symbolize the reproductive ability of rabbits. It is a form of wishing the new couple to have a baby soon and to have plentiful children. In the ceremony, the bride has to walk in special manner whereby the bride will walk with gently swaying motion and the groom will fan himself while walking. This tradition is to show the elegance of the bride and the groom as a refined scholarly gentleman. The first, third and twelfth day of wedding are most significant. On the third day of the wedding, the bride and groom return to her parents' home for the traditional Chinese wedding tea ceremony.
family rose porcelain or a golden tea set is brought up for the traditional tea ceremony. Marriage is a brand new beginning for the bride. She leaves her family and moves in with another family. She carries a mission to pass on the culture to the next generation. The life of a Nyonya is a sacrifice for family. The beauty of a Nyonya is not only in her appearance. It is about her refinement, gentleness, and sacrifice. The straight Chinese Baba Nyonyas are a unique community with a hybrid lifestyle. It is not simply differentiated by lineage, their uniqueness is presented in their culture. The most unique point of the Baba Nyonyas is that they continue with the Chinese traditions and at the same time, they absorb the surrounding local culture, including the layering of colonial influence of the Dutch, Portuguese and British, creating a new cultural identity. They are the acculturation between the foreign and local, a harmonious combination of tradition and modernity. They may look inconsequential, but it is actually harmonious. They are a unique cultural and ethnic group in Southeast Asia. Welcome to visit Penang and experience the fascinating Baba Nyonya culture. Lalu kita nahat rahu Lalu kita nahat rahu